Now we come to another set of marker models for film, animation, and games. The baseline toe headband model is also called the 53-point model. When using the 53-point model, we recommend wearing a tight-fitting suit. Our kinescope suit must fit snugly, not loose. If it's loose, it will get wrinkled. The wrinkles can easily hide the marker points. When you move, the marker points will be obscured. We will attach 53 marker points. Here's the exact positioning. Let's start with the shoulders. Find where the shoulder crest is. We'll put a marker on the front and a marker on the back. We'll put a marker on each side, one point on the front side. Then we turn around. We put a marker on the back side. It's at this spot. Then on the sternum, we are on the upper side of the sternum. Then the lower edge of the sternum. One marker on each side. We have a zipper in the middle of the suit. We can use a Velcro strap. Then we turn around to the back side. We have this spot on the back side at the base of the neck. And the center of the back. One marker on each side. It needs to be on the same level as the lower side of the sternum. Turn around and look at the points on the back side. Then the waist. There are six points on the waist. Left front, right front, left rear, right rear, and both sides. We're at the left rear of the waist, right rear on his side. We can move back a little bit at this point because like this, when the arm is lowered, this point will not be blocked by the arm. We can lean back a little bit on one side, one side a little bit more forward. We can turn the front side. I'll move forward a little bit on this side. And then the front side. It's almost at this position. That's the six points on the waist. Now let's talk about the arms. Let's start with the joints. We can bend our arms first at this raised bone. We generally call it the hog's bill in anatomy. We'll put a marker on this raised bone. Next, we'll put a marker on the upper side of the axis of rotation of the elbow. We'll put a marker on that as well. And then I'll put a marker on the other side. Next, we'll talk about the wrists. On the axis of rotation of the wrist, one marker goes on the inside and one on the outside. And then on the palm of his hand, at the base of the second index finger, and one at the base of the pinky finger. And then on the palm of his hand, and one at the base of the pinky. About these two markers, we need to maintain a certain distance between them. Ensuring there's a one finger gap. We can't have the two points in a straight line. I'm going to move over here a little bit. We can't have these two points perfectly horizontal. Now, for the upper arm and the forearm, we need to keep the left side slightly higher than the right side. The left point should be slightly higher than the right point, similar to the left arm. We usually place the markers on the outside of the arm, not on the inside. 
you can place the marker on the outer side a bit higher. I'll attach the marker to the other side first, then we'll do the forearms. It's better to have him place both hands on his shoulders. Then we'll move to the side near the center line. Let's attach the marker. As we mentioned, left side high, right side low. When the arms are lowered, his left side is higher. And the right side is lower. So when he lifts his arm, the left side should be in a slightly lower position and the right side in a slightly higher position. You can lower your arms now. We're done with the upper body. Let's move down to the lower limbs. We'll start with a forward lunge. We'll find the axis of rotation at the knee. We'll place one marker on the outside and one at the medial point. Let's move forward a little bit. That's right, a little bit forward. Don't stick it too far to the inside. Otherwise, when we bring our legs together, the two points will interfere with each other. Okay, you can switch to the other side now. Now you can stand up and put your legs together. Look at this. His two points won't touch each other. This point is a little higher. It's a bit too low. Now for the ankle. Place one marker on the outside of this bone in the ankle. Place one on the other side. Then the thigh and the calf. Again, we keep the left side high and the right side low. On the left side, it's a little higher than the center. Slightly higher. On the right side, slightly lower than the center. Same for the calves. Higher on the left side. And the right side is lower. Then the top of the foot. We usually do the toes. Then the toes. Then the inside and outside of the forefoot. We need to pay attention. The inside of the forefoot is a little more forward. The lateral side is a bit further back. When we usually place the marker, we can let them do some footwork. Because when they pad their feet, the seam of the shoe usually slants. So we can place the inner marker. The inner and outer markers will be close to the seam. This way, the inner marker will be further forward. The outer markers will be further back. You can add a little more padding to it. And then the heel. Right in the center of the heel. And finally, the head. There are five points on the head. Top of the head, then left front, right front. Left back, right back. For these five markers on the head, we try not to make them too symmetrical. Then the last marker is on the top of the head. Now he has 53 markers on his body. We're creating a movie animation for a game-related application. We need to set up the coordinate system. The y-axis should be up. The z-axis should be facing forward. We need to calibrate the system with the y-axis up. After we've calibrated and our actor has the markers attached, he can stand in the center of the field, facing the direction of the z-axis, and do a t-pose. He needs to hold his hands flat. When looking down from above, his hands should be as parallel to the x-axis as possible. Toes facing forward, feet shoulder width apart. His head should be looking forward and his arms should preferably be horizontal as well. After we make sure he's in the T-pose, we'll also ensure he has 53 markers on his body. Once everything is confirmed, we can click on freeze at the bottom of the screen. We can create a body with the right mouse button. If there's noise in the field, you can also frame the body area by holding down the shift key. Look at the number in brackets in the lower left-hand corner. If it's 53, there's no problem. Let's right-click to create a mannequin. We'll select the first option, 53, and click on the model. For the name, we can enter the name of the person or your character's name. 
After typing that, we click on Create. We can see we have created a model with a skeleton. We can click to unfreeze it. You can put your arms down. You can walk around. Now we can see that the model is being driven in real time. If you want the character model's data to go into Motion Builder in real time or into software like Maya, Unity, or Unreal, we can open the data casting pane in the view. We enable the SDK and our data can be broadcast in real time. After broadcasting in real time, we can then use the plugin for the corresponding animation software to get our data. Then you can bind it in the animation software with our models to perform a real-time drive. If we want to collect data offline for processing or driving, we can enter a file name at the bottom of the screen, input the name of the file. For example, I'll start by typing test. Then we click the record button. Okay, now you can do whatever you want, like walk around. When you're done, we can click on stop recording. Then we click pause playback, go to the edit mode, open the motion capture data in the file below. We can play back the data here. Look back at the data we just collected. If there are no issues with the data, we can click on the file in the upper left corner. Select Export FBX File or Export BH. Choose according to your needs. If you need the marker point data for Motion Builder, use the point data to drive the model. You can also export a C3D file or TRC files for Motion Builder to process. For example, I can export an FBX file when exporting FBX files, we can choose whether to insert a standard T-pose in the first frame. If you don't need it, just leave it unchecked. Click OK, then Export. After exporting the FBX file, we can review it. This FBX file can be used in Motion Builder, Maya, or Unity. This concludes the instructions for using the 53-point animated human body model.